Our guy left me a comment in one of my videos asking, hey Daniel, I have kind of a niche question. How could I make sort of a shell shock concussion effect? The kind of effect that had like ringing in your ears and someone slowly coming back to consciousness with the visible blur and muffle sound, kind of like you see in the movies. I love this question. We've seen this kind of scene many times in movies like Saving Private Ryan or The Hurt Locker, where people are around some sort of a battle or explosive scene, and you get that first person effect of how the explosion affects the people in the scene. So I thought about it for a few minutes, did a little bit of research, downloaded some things I thought that would help me make this happen, and here's what I came up with. Now, all of the elements, the video, the sound effects, all of the music, all of these things I got from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects, and images that you can use royalty-free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve. These include animated titles, transitions, motion graphics, and more. Now, I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor on the channel, mostly because I really like the quality of the product and how well it helps me with my workflow. I also really like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need there, and there are no download limits about how many high-quality videos that you can use at any given time period, or how many images, or many pieces of music, or sound effects, or templates that you can download from Storyblocks. One price gets you access to as much as you need. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. Now, I know a lot of people might be thinking, oh, awesome, this is a tutorial teaching me how to make an explosion. But it really isn't. I feel like that's been done a million times on YouTube. It's really about thinking bigger than just the effect itself. Something that creates an overall effect or a storyline that allows the viewer to get sucked into what's happening. Now, before I even sat down to make this and start editing, I started to think about what I might need to put this together. So at the very beginning, I had to develop develop a scene. I needed to create the story setup for what might be happening. Now within that scene, I needed to create characters, people that the viewer could connect with and potentially understand not only what was happening around them as an explosion might happen and see how they react to that explosion. Then it was just a matter of adding in the explosion itself, but more importantly, the aftermath. So this is my entire project here that you're looking at. It's only three tracks of video and it's eight audio tracks, which can immediately help you understand that I felt audio was probably more important to this scene than the video aspect was. Now in this main track of footage right here, let's isolate this. I'm gonna mute all of the audio and I just wanna see right here. This original piece of footage was just something I found through today's sponsor Storyblocks. It was some officers who were investigating some kind of an office building that looked a little torn apart like something had happened in there and they were searching through it looking for some kind of clues to maybe someone's identity, looking for a specific person. That was my opening shot. That was my setup. Introduce the scene and introduce the characters. This main character here, this main investigator, that's who I wanted people to focus on. This next section of footage here that I have was actually another piece of footage I got from Storyblocks, which was just a panoramic view of a city, and then there was an explosion that took over the entire city. Now, I could have actually taken footage of a city and then found some explosions and some smoke and layered them all in with some effects to create the explosion, but I think that's actually the least important part of this whole scene. I think the most important part is everything leading up to the explosion and then everything else happening after the explosion that actually makes this whole concussion effect work. Once the explosion happened, I shifted over to another piece of footage of these same officers in a room where there had clearly been some kind of explosion and there was papers and smoke and things flying everywhere. And I started cutting back in between that as their view. And I cut that back to sort of the third person view of someone who's just looking back and seeing the explosion happening over the course of the city and juxtapose the two. 
So the footage itself is fairly simple, right? The opening shot, then there's the explosion, then there's the people inside of the building feeling the effects of the explosion, cut back to the explosion a little bit more, and back to the people in the building one more time dealing with the panic and anxiety of something in the city just having detonated. Now, if you look in the tracks above, there's really not a whole lot going on. I can isolate some of these. I'm just fading in a little bit of smoke on top of that footage. Very light effect just to create a little more dust and buildup. And I use it only in the sections where we're cutting back to the office scene. And above that, all I have here is an adjustment track that's adding a little bit of a camera shake effect to sort of move the footage because after the explosion happens, what I wanna have happen is all of the footage starts moving, not only explosion in the city, almost as if it's shaking that camera, but the camera that's filming the people inside of the office building, that's shaking too. So that entire adjustment clip, if I click on this, you'll see in the upper right, if I open up the inspector, all I did here was I added a camera shake effect from my effects menu just to get that feel of that explosion happening around them. That's literally all the video I used. What really starts to sell this is the audio underneath and the way I've cut the footage together to work with that audio. Let me break some of this down. Here's the very first audio track. It's actually like a cinematic, scary crescendo music track that actually has a clock ticking in it. Listen to what's going on right here. Can you hear that buildup? Can you hear how it's starting to slowly get up there a little bit? It's starting to crescendo. Then that clock starts ticking in with it at the same time. And I actually cut that so that it ended right on one specific clock hit. So that last ticking sound would just end right before the explosion. And you can hear that here. But I wanted to build on top of this, so I found this other music track that was another ominous sounding effect from Storyblocks. If you listen here, all I did was I slowly keyframed this to be a little louder as it played, and it's got an open cavernous feel. Kind of spooky. But it does a very cool thing in the track itself. The crescendo stopped and echoed out as the crescendo happens. That echo was perfect for sort of creating a little bit of space. And then it drops into the explosion. This is the explosion track. And I stopped that hollow ring just short enough to allow the explosion to happen and then faded it back in. That allowed a little bit of space for the atmosphere of the scene to breathe. Just that slightly hollow sound of looking over the city right before something horrible happens. It almost looks like there's an explosion and it's like the wave of fireball moves outward across the city. So I use this one other effect, this other sound effect down here that literally was like a fireball flames expanding sound and added that in so that it would have this sort of whooshing over the city sound. Take a listen to this other explosion effect sound right here, I lay it underneath. So when you listen to those three explosion sounds stacked together, it creates a much wider sound effect. Now over here where I cut back to the main characters in that office building dealing with this explosion, I did a couple of things. I had sort of a screaming sounds of people screaming that I put in there. But what I did is over in the Fairlight page for those tracks was I was able to add in an EQ effect that allowed me to roll off some of the highs and the lows. And in this case, I actually added the EQ directly to the clips in the timeline. But effectively all those were, were pulling up an EQ and rolling off all of these bottom lows to get them to be not too rumbly, but most of all taking out a lot of the highs, rolling that back so it's just all low and rumbly as if someone's ears had been blown out so that they can't really hear full frequency and they're just hearing sort of the rumbling of what's going on. I did that for any of the sound effect clips that I had stacked for this section where the people are reacting. There was some explosion, there was some rumbling, there was some people talking, and I muted them all down to make it feel like those people really couldn't hear each other because their hearing had been blown out. If you ever notice, sometimes your ears will ring when you're exposed to something very loud. I don't even know if you can hear this, it's very subtle, but this track right here, 
It's just a slight ding sound that I added in and repeated so that it would feel like someone's ears were ringing. And at one point I'm watching what's happening on screen and I can see that this main character looks like he's coughing. I just found a sound effect of a person actually coughing, a male's voice coughing. I added that in and lined it up with what I was seeing on screen and just made the cough sort of feel like it was happening in that same muffled effect. I used the EQ to roll off a lot of the high end. None of this footage had any audio when I downloaded it from Storyblocks. So I needed to create all of the things that I'm seeing on screen. Now they were sort of rustling around an office and I needed to create that feeling of maybe people moving things around and moving papers and moving objects and looking for things. So these are only really two different sound effects. One is actually restaurant noise, the people working in a restaurant. Now I know these are restaurant sounds, but it worked what I was doing in here because they were working around sort of metal filing cabinets. And I know this is plates and things, but it just had a sort of metallic sound of things being shuffled around. And I thought it worked pretty well. The other sound effect I found was people in a post office. So it was sort of this sound effect of papers being shuffled and maybe some people talking inside of a post office. So those two together, when I combined them, even though they had nothing to do with police officers in a building in a city before an explosion, it helped create the sound effect of people shuffling around this office and maybe looking for something. The only other effect I added is when I got to the part where he reached down and he had lifted up this cardboard, I needed some sort of paper shuffling sound to really bring out the foley of him grabbing this cardboard and lifting it away. Really, really simple stuff. Just looking on screen at what I have going on and trying to make sure I have the sound effects that would make that feel like people are actually watching something that's really happening. Now this section right here, when I got to the explosion, this piece of footage, I modified that slightly in the color page. The footage actually looked like this, but I actually used the curves to bring it up to be much brighter because I almost wanted that flash of an explosion to happen. And then you can see in the keyframes here, I animated that color change so it went from very bright back to the original look. And you can see that happen in the keyframes here. but just brightening that up and creating a bit of that flash, that made it help feel like you were in that office building with them experiencing that explosion. Everything else, I kind of left it as it was. It kind of did what I needed it to do. But these layers on top of each other is what allowed this experience to feel like you were in the middle of an investigation with these officers and you got their reaction. Now, instead of just letting this run at this point, it was important for me to cut back to the city scene so you get a point of reference of what's happening in the city and then their firsthand experience. That contradiction allows you to see the differences between the explosion happening in real time and their sort of muffled, high-pitched ringing ears all happening as they're experiencing that explosion. If you wanna learn more about how to create cool looking effects in DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.